Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. It is Local Chat, episode 181. I am your host, Will Crosby. Joining me this week is the expert, the Fire Emblem expert himself. It's oh Jason from Save Data. I'm no expert. I just play a lot of games over and over again, like a fool. That's what an expert is, 10,000, 10,000 hours. No. Uh, also here, Ian Gibson, uh, fresh, fresh off the golf course. What was the par today? Um, how did you know I've been playing golf games? <laughs> because <laughs> I actually, I actually played like 12 golf games yesterday. That's real you, weird. Well, you still have your ear bandage on. This isn't a... <laughs> okay, it doesn't make sense, but it's, it's topical enough to work. Um, have you actually played what's that, golf? <laughs> No, there's part of me that wants to go to a driving range just to hit balls, but every time I go to a driving range, I'm I can't hit a ball further than 60 yards. I'm dog shit at it. Uh, oh. what, where'd the golf come from? Because I'm wearing the a polo. Like a yeah, it's it's not Last a polo. It's a, it's, We're in Florida too. It's a pullover. You can't you can't tell this. It's like a linen button up. It's not a golf. It's thing, actually it's actually a winter see. jacket. You can't tell. It's actually but... a onesie. It's a romper. Oh, uh, do you have a little hat you, you are... can poop through? You guys ever worn a romper? There's part of me that wants to wear a romper. You guys know what a no. romper is? No. It's like, uh, it's, it was popular in women's fashion a couple of years ago. I think it's kind of gone out, but it's basically, imagine coveralls, but short sleeve, short shorts. And then it's just one piece. Oh, That's yes. a romper. I want one. I want a men's romper. Yeah. Because I, I feel I, like I've seen myself What before. are you talking about? Rompers are still in yeah. style? Yeah. Yeah. Jason wears one every night. No, I, I see know, girls man. in rompers, man. They ugly? I see guys in rompers. <laughs> they ugly. See, that's what I'm talking about. I actually, I'm they, just going to look up. They look, they look like pajamas, me. but just like shorts. How do you pee? Is there a, is there a zipper? Or do you pull just it to the side? The like panties. Usually buttons all the way down. Like buttons all the way down through the crotch. Like the turtles all the way down. Um. <laughs> anyways, folks, that was, if you want to see more hot, a hot banter like that, um, just go to our Patreon. Uh, which is... Sorry. Um, what? What was that? I? I have a declaration. I will wear a romper for the first time on Extra, extra life. life this year. There we go. There yes. we go. Let me put that on the list. So it's Extra list. Life. Always. Put it on the list. Uh, Sorry. Continue. Uh, we have a tiny bit of chit chat, which I put in here. Yeah. Oh, so you put that in there. Yeah. So you've been watching Pornhub. <laughs> you know. That's what it is. Uh, no, actually, I want to talk about the pH balance of my nether regions. Uh, speaking of rompers, uh, no, uh, Karen and I, for a while, uh, on our street, there is a pizza hut and oh, it's no, been okay. there and they recently, like it's right next to the Marine sign up place. So you know what it's like? Uh, it's also a J like kitty corner, not kitty corner. It's, it's Attic near corner. the same parking lot as, um, the bagel place near us, which is the best bagels in New Jersey. Um, and is Jersey known for their bagels? No, I don't think so. Um, <laughs> just their trash. This so is, we um, uh, so we drive past it all the time because it's the main way out of out of out of Dodge. And uh, uh, we were like, we should try it sometime. But our go-to like bad pizza is Domino's because we actually like Domino's. It's it's a nostalgia thing for both of us, and we also like it's, it's still cheap enough and it's good. Uh, especially since that rebrand in, in whenever, like 2009, 2010. Uh, and so we're like, ah, oh, we'll get it one time, like or, when we're not uh, wanting Domino's, all this sort of stuff. So anyways, finally we tried Pizza Hut. I ordered a, uh, the pricing actually was pretty comparable. We got a stuffed crust large with crispy pepper. They had tiny crispy pepperonis, which was fantastic. Ooh. Best part of the entire meal. And then we got a side of their like boneless wings. Boneless wings tasted like upper tier frozen boneless wings. Um, so they weren't bad, but they were just like, I expected better of an establishment that is able to cook things. The pizza, the pepperonis were great. Everything else about that pizza was God awful. Um, and, and like in an edible way, like I wasn't like not going to eat it. Like it was still like food and sustenance, but just like the mozzarella in the like cheese stuff crust seemed a little like chemically. I don't know if that's the right yes. word. Um, yeah. 
That's and the right so, word. So, so, yeah. so, so we finished that. Uh, Karen took the rest for lunch today because I was. She was like, "Can I take it for lunch?" Expecting me to be like, "No," and I was like, "Yeah, you can," because I made a fantastic fucking buffalo chicken burrito for lunch today, which was a thousand times better than the Pizza Hut pizza. But anyways, we tried Pizza Hut. Uh, everybody out pizzas the hut. Everybody. Sure. Um, nobody. Uh, no, the Pizza Hut is at the bottom of this this ladder of pizza. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, I feel it's like a nightmare. My my personal pizza story, specifically pizza chains, not local pizza places, because mm -hmm. those are always better. But we can't really talk about those because there's no comparison. It's they're true. not chains, you know. But my pizza chain story was, uh, we had a Pizza Hut like two miles from our house. So we, when we wanted pizza, we would get Pizza Hut because it was like dirt cheap and it was okay. So this was like early to mid two thousands, right? Late 2000s, we switched to Papa John's because Papa John's we thought was a little bit better and they had some like really good coupons better like ingredients. once a month. Better, pizza. better ingredients, better pizza. Yeah. Racist Papa John's. <laughs> uh, and then so we did that for a while, but then something happened where Papa John's just became awful, especially when we moved down here and we would get Papa John's with the family and something about the Papa John's down here they would always be like 45 minutes behind. So it was like, we're getting a pizza that doesn't taste oh. as good as it used to. And it's 45 minutes late. And so we've, we've switched to Domino's. We were never a Domino's family, but for the past year we've been doing Domino's and it's like, it's not amazing, but you're right. It's like, it's like well, the best fast food pizza and it has good deals. It's because Domino's yeah. in the late nineties and early two thousands had it. They had uh they like rebranded everything. Oh yeah. They yeah. actually said yeah. like they had like they made with real cheese was like a thing. I was like, what were you using earlier then, guys? Like Yeah, exactly. Like, it was nineties yeah. and like the mid two thousands, it was terrible when we that were was, young. That was the rebrand where they yeah. added like the garlic stuff on the crust. Yes. And all yes. that. Okay. Cause that's what yeah. I was telling Karen. She was like, Man, how come I didn't grow up with Domino's? And I was like, No, it was used to be it bad. It was literally it was literally the meme mm -hmm. bad yeah, pizza. It was that's what so it was. bad. And then it got yeah. very very, very good. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and again, I, as fast food trash pizza. I think it's yeah. because Little Caesars actually like may have forced them a lot too. I, they were I was just about to big. say Little Caesars because Little Caesars like 2012 to 2014 yeah, was my was pizza place. It. Yeah. Because I was a poor unemployed college graduate yeah. so I could get a hot and ready for five bucks. Right. Yeah. I haven't had it since then. And actually I tried to have them like two months ago and I did an online order for pickup. It's so bad now. And I went to the store and I sat in the parking lot for an hour and they just they never said the pizza was ready. And I could see people like 10 people waiting in the store. So I left. I went to Wendy's and I ate Wendy's and I like went online to try and cancel the order. I couldn't figure it out. And guys, to this day, my pizza is still in the oven, according to Little Caesars. <laughs> Like it never did anything. It was just like we put it in the oven at seven o'clock three months ago, and that is it. So I I do want to try Little Caesars again because I remember liking it, but the, I'm the, afraid the customer service well, is crap. They had now. the problem is they also had to change it to five dollars. They can't do that anymore because it's too expensive. Yeah, and then um they they've been doing gimmicky stuff to try to sell things now. Like they put like the pretzels yeah. like the pretzels as crust. Yeah, like, oh, yeah they, did, they did have those little like like pizza bites, like pizza yeah. muffin things that people were going crazy for. So I, I do want to try those yep. just to try them. But it's one of those things where it's like I feel like the product's great, but it's not worth the hassle to get to the product. Yeah, I've never tried Little Caesars. That's the one that I always wanted to try. But then I also heard pizza it, it had gotten too. bad. Um, pizza is fine. Yeah. What about so, Costco pizza? What's y'all's opinion I, on Costco so pizza? Costco pizza, because Karen was like, she was like trying to rank them together. And I think Costco pizza is way better than both Domino's and Pizza Hut. I think it's I think it's a good pizza. OK, I should try it because I, 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 I haven't had it in a couple of years and I only had it once. It's but like I'd be willing thick. to just pick up a pizza. It's very yeah. heavy, very thick. Uh, and it's just like so good. And oh, man, I just want it. Speaking of bad pizza, you know what I did not have the other night because I did not want it? Uh, authentic Chicago Giordano's deep oh dish God. pizza. That's not a pizza, <laughs> though. That's a lasagna. I know. It was. Yeah, it really was like I've, a lasagna. I've never had deep dish. I want to try deep dish. It's not bad. It's just not pizza. No, that's, no, I, I agree there. Yeah, 100 percent. It is not pizza. Um, I think the closest farthest away type of pizza 
was like the Detroit style because it's still made in a yeah. pan, yep. but yep. it's only made in a pan so you can cover the edges of it in cheese. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. We get the Motor City Detroit frozen pizzas from Costco, and that is one of the that is a fantastic frozen pizza. But besides just, the point, I want to try an Uno's or not an Uno's, a Chicago style pizza. Um, but yeah. I don't know if there's any places around here that do it other than an Uno's, um, which I don't think I want to try it there. You got it. You may have a Giordano's around you though, because they do have some chains. Like they have they have I'll some have franchises out there. I would love it if I there's just, like a um, local place that does it. Yeah, I just. Especially now with my acid reflux, telling me something has like tripled the amount of red sauce on it. I'm like, no, I don't want to risk it. Doesn't feel like it's worth it. Um, but maybe one day I will try an authentic Chicago. I've tried deep dish before, but it was always like, oh, you guys both haven't had it before. Dish. I mean, it's I haven't had the real one. I've had yeah. like pizzeria. Uno, you know, I mean, I've been to Chicago a lot, uh, like 15 times in my life because it's the big area city around us. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Like I said, nothing crazy. It's mm -hmm. not bad or good. It's just when you, if you go in expecting pizza, you're gonna be like, okay, this is not really. No. But it I also can't. takes a re it takes a really fucking long time to make too. Yeah. Because it's, it's forty five minutes. Yeah. At Giordano's. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. So that's well. Someday, I, actually, I'm going to Italy in August, so I'll wear the authentic deep dish pizzas. <laughs> deep <right>? dish. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the worst pizza. I, I, the I original deep dish. Before. The worst pizza I've ever had was South Korea pizza. It was fucking terrible. Oh, I can. I'm not was even it like mayonnaise it. and what was wrong with it? <laughs> it was. They tried making pizza and they just can't. They didn't use any like the the stuff that makes pizza. Like they don't. They didn't add. No offense. Just probably oozes of like sugar and like unhealthy stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. So it was just wrong. like, like everything's wrong. It was yeah. just yeah. wrong. It just like everything was not the right thing. Everything like, was substitutions. I feel bad. Yeah, I feel yeah. bad, but it's like this is not pizza. Like it's like maybe I'm just yeah. used to everything being so sugared and so like just corn syrupy and stuff. I don't know. It was not but great. Will Will and I have a shared experience where we both ate the worst pizza we've ever had together. <laughs> and and it was we were we were at we were at uh, Sip Studio one time filming some stuff, <laughs> and George comes in and he's like, "Hey." <gasps> I'm going to 7-Eleven to get a pizza. You want you want to split it? And we're like, what do you mean? He goes, 7-Eleven has great 7-Eleven has great pizza. And this is in like Jersey City. And we're like, okay, whatever. He comes back with pizza and it looks like a pizza. And we start eating it. And I don't even know how to describe it, Will, other than just like it was like 90% chemical taste. Like it did not taste like pizza at all. It just tasted so chemically. It was bad. It tasted like biting into a bottle of like like counter cleaner. Like I yeah. don't. It was, it was so just. It, it was bad. fucked. It was so. Seven Eleven pizza by far is the worst. It, it was, was terrible. It, and it it could have been made a week ago probably and reheated. It was. Oh, that was no, because it would have tasted better than that. This yeah, didn't even taste like pizza. Would have had flavor from the mold. <laughs> Um, oh, it's so bad i don't even know how to describe the it. the second worst it now that you remind me of that the second worst pizza i've ever had was in florida in miami uh when i was shooting a documentary uh and the developers we were at the developer's house and i'm like oh we'll order from this pizza place it's really great pizza and i also didn't think of it i mean both of the de uh, developer and his wife are not from america either and so i was like mm. oh okay and so they order it and i had it and it was to them probably the best pizza they've ever had because it's the only pizza they've ever had it was like it was like a mi like a microwave pizza you make on like a pita like that is the yeah. level of like just Jeez. not it was and i don't even want to say it tasted bad it just wasn't pizza at all it was like someone saw an image yeah. of pizza like the south korean pizza and they were just like oh i it can was, approximate that <laughs> yeah it was it was bad I, I do have a um I, I have something that i feel guilty about i feel embarrassed about so not last year's extra life the extra life before that we finished extra life we get to sunday it's like 2 p.m on sunday everybody's exhausted but we're kind of hungry and i'm like hey i know this really good pizza place it's 25 minutes away i'll order it and then like kyle went and picked it up and brought the pizza back i i don't know if you felt this way will but that pizza was very i've had that pizza before it's very very good but for some reason on that day that pizza the crust tasted bad and i was like I didn't mention it, but I was just like, I feel so embarrassed that I hype this pizza place up. And the one day I share it with friends, they fuck up the crust. And I was just like, no, 
because every other time it's been fantastic but that one day the the crust did not taste right did did, did it feel I, like that to you will uh, do you remember it my memory doesn't go back that far <laughs> okay thank god <laughs> i'm glad i can finally talk but i'm about glad you it. reminded me of something that i should hold against you because those are always oh, fun you. to have <laughs> we have a different pizza place we can pick from this year oh thank god um or barbecue man, I'm, again. i not to get derailed again but i am genuinely very excited for extra life this year uh because it's like a mini work vacation and yeah. it's like doing things you like to do like even the whole setup part is so much fun uh um, it, it is fun there's there's a bit of a, a masochistic part to it for me which is that extra life the biggest thing that sucks about extra life is i have to deep clean the house <laughs> and it takes like a week and a half. But the good thing is, as soon as Extra Life is done, it's like, oh, thank God, the house is so clean and I don't have to deep clean it for another year. So it's like it's like it sucks for me that I have so much more prep and hard work, but I love the payoff at the end of it when it's like, oh, it's so clean in here. You know, that's like whenever we have Chris and Vic over, it's like, oh, we got to clean the apartment. And then it's like, oh, but we clean the apartment like everything's nice. Yeah. Like you finally like hang a picture up or something. Uh, and it's like so nice and you're like okay this yeah. is worth it um and then anyway extra life come with their white gloves yeah. and yes. test to look for everything that's yeah. the worst they're very you, judgmental. wait till you guys aren't able to pick up the extra life date because that's the that's oh i can't line. wait i can't wait we're gonna draft pick it that's, and then oh, you're that's gonna on, pick the same date it's just funny i don't know if we're actually gonna do it but it is really funny if we just say that's the that's the, the, the win one, one of the prizes yeah. is getting to pick the day that is actually I'm, I'm genuinely very that. funny we're only like four months we're, we're less than four yeah, months close. if we pick an early weekend so yeah we should I'm start excited. planning it uh yeah, i gotta come through that sure. uh that we have a suggestions thread which was a genuinely good idea i think i last combed it in may so i need to go back through and add it i made a whole like spreadsheet of like stream ideas extra life ideas miscellaneous ideas discord ideas oh, perfect and so i have to i like i think i wrote the date of the last time i checked it so I need to go back through that because gotcha. there's been some banger extra life ideas because i think all of us will just go in there and type the idea and just walk away like so i remember yeah. it for later so i'm excited and i've, I've started story. to order order aliexpress and amazon stuff for extra Ooh, life so i should I'm do excited. that i have my green screen suit again we should come up with a game to play with the green screen suit we were we had be. the one where one person you're wearing the green screen you're kind of in front of the camera and then somebody is just looking at the monitor and the game is green screened onto you <laughs> and they have to play it like Can that. It be like those girls on Twitch who were doing it, but it was on their butts. Uh, yeah. And they like painted like one of their cheeks or something with like green paint. Yeah. And they were playing the game yeah. on it. And I was like, exactly that. I was like, yeah, yeah I can get off to this. What? Uh, yeah. So we could, yeah, we could try that. We could try that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Playing Glover on Ian's ass cheek will be one of the, one of the unlocks. You gotta love the we glove. Could, oh, will okay this ties into extra life may i take you on an adventure real quick which is guys i have a i have something i have to tell you and there's part of me that is it's funny but it's also frustrating maggie is terrible at interior design she's, <laughs> she's not good at it and so when she decides to do something it ends up being bad and then she blocks some of my good choices because she thinks they're bad one of her worst decisions was deciding to paint the master bedroom and the color that she picked and did <laughs> two of the four walls in <laughs> is straight fucking chroma key green so i like green <laughs> no it's it's chroma key green it is fucking green screen green so we had that on our walls for like six months until i finally convinced her i'm like this is not working out we gotta we gotta get rid of this because <laughs> like she knew it was bad she up stopped screaming. halfway <laughs> <laughs> she stopped halfway, so half the room was was green screen green. So, anyways, um, extra life. Guess who's got like a? I think I have a half gallon of green screen green that we can paint on whatever the fuck we want to. <laughs> Hell yeah, I'm excited for that. We're gonna paint it on. I. We could paint it on people. It's just house paint. It's yeah. It's I was safe. thinking the couch, but yeah, we can. We can paint it on whatever. <laughs> actually that'd be funny if you got a giant anyways we can't keep talking about this folks uh we're here to talk about video games because that's what we do here on this podcast 
Um, Jason, it's been a while since you've been here, and you literally yeah. put nothing in the in the section. Have you yeah. been playing any video games at all? I have. Yeah, I've been doing some stuff. I don't know if you want me to go first or not, but I do want you to go yeah. first. That's why. That's why I've I've I segued right into your name. Right. And then that's a little. We call that a clue in. So besides being on all the shows, I'm on Fire Emblem, uh, Fire Emblem, and I we just started Tango uh, Tangle Tower on stream, which is a puzzle game. Besides stream games for channel various channels, I I did play like for instance, I played Radiant Dawn. I finished it in a week Ooh. using all bad units was my Ooh. challenge, like only bad units, and I grinded out for like a week, and that was pretty fast. I think I spent like thirty to forty hours streaming in a week. So a lot, uh, but I finished it, so that's not bad. And then uh, we did that, and then uh, the Pokemon tournament is something I've been just practicing and doing all that off stuff as well. So that's been most of my week for the last two weeks, besides playing various stuff that I don't really count, just like Steam games mm -hmm. that I already own. But the Pokemon tournament, if you guys want to see your favorite Subpixel members, and unfortunately Kyle can't be there, but... Just because of the round numbers, it's six three v three, or it's a, it's actually still a free for all. These guys are still versing. If you want to see your favorite sub pixel member, uh, August third. Uh, I hope you guys can stream it probably too. That'd be kind of fun or something. I don't know. We'd have to work on that. But um, yeah, uh, I'm just. Isn't there a way to just flat out restream now? They got I have no idea. Oh, Twitch got actually, rid of the I think they got rid of it. Thing. They got yeah. rid of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Either way. Uh, you get to see these guys play Pokemon. You've seen them play Pokemon on our channel. Uh, it's always a fun. I've been on one of their streams. I've seen streams of these guys playing Pokemon. I'm interested to see how these guys develop because like their teams. We're not going to spoil what the teams are yet, but uh, hopefully these guys are prepared for what's going on. Uh, I've already got some coaching sessions in with some of the homies. So uh, they they have a, you guys have a good shot. You guys have a good shot. And a fun, it's going to be fun. I think everybody's going to be on a similar level except for. Mr. Zachary, but uh, yeah, he's really bad. Can I uh, can I say something? Nobody yeah. watches this, so I think it's OK for me to say this. Go ahead. I can tell Jason that you really want to play in this. No, I don't actually. Well, I feel like it would be very cool if it would be very funny if whoever places first place, we then have a surprise elite four finish and they then have to immediately go against I was, you i was thinking that as a potential but i was like okay then it would be really embarrassing if i lost so yeah yeah, yeah. but all the more victory for the pokemon champion right sure 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 like sure, i sure. could beat you so you better make sure i don't get yeah, well, to the final unless i'm going in literally missing instead of yeah. one sense two senses maybe even three i don't think that's gonna happen well <laughs> i don't know i um i i I was going to say, well, I have two things. All right. Sorry. They hit at the same time. The first yeah. one is, I think if we did that to balance it out, like you said, you would have a team for every type, yeah. but it's, it's a random pool, which, which type you, you have to pick do. Like one through 18 or something like that. Like, I, yeah. I, I, I can assign them numbers and do that if I really wanted to. Yeah. Cause that, so, that would just be funny. Final boss type thing. It the is, other it, thing is, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say. I know I'm getting ahead of the cart here because we haven't even done the first Pokemon tournament, but I okay. like the idea of the winner then gets to decide and maybe even run the next tournament and theme. You know, maybe it's a tournament where it's like you can only have one Pokemon across your entire team, you know, like like okay. they pick the theme for the next tournament because this one is monotype and then we go from there and the winner gets to pick that, you know? Yeah, I mean, if we're down from more crossovers, I think that people would like that. I know people just like seeing channels versus each other and especially something that's so popular there's a lot yeah. of room for trash talk and like yeah. ian may or may not have some plans for potentially looking like a, his guy i'm not sure his his gym leader that he's representing or his team that he's representing he might he yeah might i will so. be in character i yeah. can promise so, that i mean anytime we can give you guys like a viewership boost i think it's it's okay. nice to do that sort of yeah, charity that's work. true <laughs> That's true. I do have to say the one thing, the one thing that I I don't know that we can hold this over save data, but I I love it is that our diehard fans came from save data and they were like, oh, what's the subpixel thing? And now they're like <laughs> yeah. our diehard fans, yeah. and it's like it's like yeah, we poached them. There's only That's three funny. or four of them, but we poached them, baby. It's because <laughs> instead enough. of chatting in a in a Discord full of 
uh, like hornets -year -olds. constantly talking. They can come over <laughs> yeah. here and land a joke for like eight people. <laughs> yeah. We have yeah. a good time. Um, that's yeah, fun. That's that, um, yeah, I'm happy you've been prepping. Uh, yeah, Fire Emblem's been going good with you. Uh, you can c continue to be dumbfounded by my incredible tac tactical mind. I, I uh, almost <laughs> have you guys, lost. A have you guys talked spells. yet? Is that what you're talking about? Oh, no, in mean? Fire Emblem. Uh, oh, Fire sorry, Emblem, I thought you were talking Emblem. about Pokemon. Teams. No, 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 no. no we I haven't, haven't talked with him yet. I haven't talked I with have any of the subjects of boys, and I'm worried. I think Jake's I, is going to come in, Guns of Boys, and so I I'm going to pull a doing. team and then get your opinion on it. So I will, okay. I will be calling you. Um, yeah, but Fire Emblem's going great. We're almost done. I think we have like four more missions left. We got through two missions. Yeah, uh, I think we have three more streams this week. We played till 11 p.m. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Jeez. we're we're getting there. I'm, I'm very see. The problem is, it's still a good game too. So it's like I do want to keep playing it. So it just and it works yeah. out that we've been able to do the Tuesdays. So, uh, looking forward to finally finishing it. Um. Yeah, you should too. you should heavily publicize the final stream because I I will be there for the final stream I can promise you that. Okay, yeah, it's when the final stream is whenever I get a job, so we have to wait. <laughs> <laughs> we got twelve more Fire Emblem well, games. Kyle, to go. Kyle said he might be driving up for it, right? Too? Uh, yes, Kyle did mention he thought about driving up for the finale whenever we do it, and he was going to bake a That'd Fire Emblem cake. I think is what he said. And yeah, I was he like, said that. you know, that'd be pretty cool. I, when I have is a couch. It? When, it, when is we it? don't we don't know when yet because we, we have to yet. see we have to see how much we should when be able to finish two it? next the two each next time, and we have like around five. Oh, I know uh, what you're asking now. <laughs> yeah, he wants to fly in for it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fuck it, I'll fly up. We can get we get a studio. Mean, it'll Let's probably it. be the. 30th 30th or the 6th i mean it'll be i i'm away starting the 8th oh. so i would hopefully finish before the 8th um i think actually i don't think i can make that i got i think if we if we might be able to do it depends how quick we go yeah You're right but we'll get to it uh we can we can finish that the final mission is really short but so that's good yeah and i'll uh i'll nail it first try um i guess i'll go next i uh again in tradition will crosby tradition of the past weeks uh i have also started and beaten the game between local chat uh episodes and this time it was uh thank you thank you thank you steam world dig 2 i uh started up and oh, beat so, fucking, so um, fucking good isn't it it's so <laughs> good it's a fantastic <laughs> video game i didn't 100 percent it or anything um but it's just like uh for those who don't know it's it's a 2d platformer metroidvania lightish sort of game like it's not you're unlocking items to get to new areas but you're not quite the same volume i think in most metroidvanias that it opens up a new place uh but it's really fun it's in the steam world uh universe on that planet where steam world one was connects to the story uh, and it just feels really good. It's really good platforming, really good digging, collecting jewels, a great loop of like you're digging down and by the time you get to the next like steam pipe that brings you back up to the beginning town, you're like full up in your in your bags with gems and like you can go up, sell them all. Uh, and then you're upgrading stuff with uh, there's these little caves that you can go into and do like challenges and stuff to unlock more uh, gear or get more cogs, which cogs upgrade your uh different items you have my favorite thing about the upgrade system is you're just you have a your set pool of cogs is growing and you can just turn them you can pull them on and off of all the upgrades whenever like you're not none of the upgrades are permanent oh, that's nice. it's like when i'm done upgrading and i have one left over i just toss it onto a random one because i have one left over it's like stuff like that it feels so good and then when i know i collect two more cogs i'm like oh i have three now i'm gonna pull that random one back and put it on one that i actually want um, all the items feel great, uh, and, and like, it, it's things you would think of for items, but they kind of like all caught me by surprise, and I was like, oh yeah, that is a good item upgrade, uh, to like traversal and stuff like that, oh, stuff like that, so, uh, SteamWorld Dig 2, highly recommend, I beat it in like six hours, I think, seven hours? Yeah, I, yeah, it's I think very it's like six short. to eight, because um, I remember I was on like a four-day business trip. And I took my Switch and I got SteamWorld Dig 2 and I played it and beat it throughout that trip. And it's it's just like 
a perfect microcosm of game design because it's like every single thing they do is deliberate and it's onboarding you or in, to a new mechanic or enhancing that mechanic or teaching you on that mechanic and everything feels like a little bit challenging but then rewarding and not punishing and it's just it feels like you said perfectly paced where you're like oh i'm gonna get down and just as my backpack's full oh here's where i can go back up as a shortcut like it's it it genuinely feels like a perfect game because every single piece of it feels like very it's, finely it's, tuned and perfectly implemented it's not too long right as you said eight hours no, yeah, no it's, it's like, like five six, six, six to eight hours to get through main yeah. story yeah okay. Also, the main story is like really a master great. class. Yeah, yeah. It's just like a master class in game design. How yeah. they 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 put it together, basically. Um, I will say the final boss was kind of annoying. It's the only time I died like multiple times, and I think it was mostly because uh, the final boss you're more of like surviving rather than attacking, and it was just like it was until I like realized that that I was having trouble with it. But uh, oh, I overall. Remember. Yeah, it's it's a weird. It's also, the game really doesn't have boss fights, so it's kind of a weird thing. But it was also like, how else would you end it? Um, at least it wasn't a quick time event, so that's fun. That's true. Yeah. At least it wasn't. <laughs> um, and then uh, I've also started playing Castlevania. Um, uh, Castlevania Which one? one uh, by Konami, nineteen eighty six. That's the NES. That's NES, right? Okay. Yes. Because uh, I was I, I was looking at at playing a castlevania and i was looking at aria of sorrow because i've never played a castlevania where where should i hop in if you Ooh. had to recommend one so i am i am more of a simp for castlevania um i haven't really dated or bedded castlevania much um in this uh weird scenario i've set up uh but i have made severe love to uh symphony of the night fantastic video game um that is wonderful looks great i played the xbox arcade version which thankfully let me take turn off the like uh up res on it um but yeah i highly uh -huh. recommend symphony of the night i think it's it's the perfect metroid it's the vania of metroidvania uh it is a it is a wonderful game um it's PS1, right? dracula's son right or something like that no one uh, excuse me, let's not spoil things. You play as Alucard. That's who you play as, though. You play as Alucard, who is Dragon's How is that son. a spoiler? It's yeah, a it's, fucking 30-year-old I mean, game. I, I, it's just you're <laughs> spoiling things. And next you're going to say he has a whip, which, uh, he doesn't. He, excuse I, you. Oh, it's a, okay. I, that's, uh, that's PlayStation 1, Symphony of the Night. PS1, yep. Uh, there's a yeah. Xbox, like I said, there's an Xbox-compatible arcade version or whatever. Yeah, fuck that's that. Because right. what I... <laughs> This, this isn't jumping to my game segment. It's just a nice little aside, which is on my 24 hour business trip that I took uh, yesterday. I did bring my R35S, which is my little Game Boy size retro device. And I was playing some N64 and PS1 games on there. So there you go. that could totally nice. run. So Glover, yeah. right? Glover, I, I the Glover, right? Glover. I have played Glover on that. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> Let Zach know it's actually a good game because it actually I um, it is a good not. game. Uh, <laughs> I will uh, yeah, not. I've been. I've been playing Castlevania on the Miu Mini. I own the Castlevania collection on the Switch, uh, and that Switch has the worst D-pad and shit ever. So I was like, I don't want to oh, play yeah. it on this. If I'm because I was gonna play handheld. Uh, if it was Pro Controller, I would be more okay with it. Uh, so I play. I'm playing it on the Miu Mini. Runs fantastic on there. Uh, I um, am only using save states. So, I mean, theoretically, the real Castlevania, when you turn it off and turn it back on, it starts at the beginning of the game again. Uh, but when you die in a level, you just start at the beginning. You, actually, when you die in a level, you start at the latest stage you're on. And then if you lose all three lives on a stage, you start at the beginning of the level. Uh, so I'm just hard saving at the beginning of every level. Uh, and then when I finish a session, just go back there and hard save again. Uh, but it's great. I just beat the two mummies. Uh, I, I'm, I think I'm very good at the first two bosses in that game because I've played them a lot, which is uh, the bat, which you can actually kill in one hit. Uh, I recently Ooh. learned I want to actually go back and see if I can do it. But basically, if you go up on the stairs, there's a thing in Castlevania, which is if you hit an enemy exactly when they're hitting you, uh, they, they instantly die. So you can make the bat fly into you and you just like whip. Uh, and it immediately kills it. Gotcha. Uh, and it, or uh, sorry, you do you automatically do damage, but because uh, you have double damage and he's he's touching you, it like 
does like 15 damage right out the gate and just auto kills it uh but yeah uh so i've been playing that it's castlevania it's the original one for the nes i i'm i want to go through two and three uh and then see what happens from there but yes uh symphony of the night is my wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute, oh, wait a minute. Uh, well we've talked what? about this what yeah we've talked about this yeah this is a new resolution of yours just because you no, play one good game I, does not mean you need to immediately play no, the sequels I, we've talked yes, about this yes i'm not going yeah, to immediately play two and three i am just going okay. to play uh, although i will say i feel like th this is like my tv or watching a stream and playing a game on the Mew mini so I feel like those style of games kind of transcend that where like it's almost like a Picross game. I can just go to the next Picross game like Castlevania. I'm not like most of those games. I'm just thinking about story. So um, I hear you. But this is this was this was your own rule. I'm just making sure you're aware. Yeah, of it. I know. I'm aware of it because I did finish. I finished KOTOR and then next was Steam World Dig 2. And now I have to figure out what I'm going to play next. There's some been some recent games on Game Pass. I think I might try to check out um yeah but i'll and there I'll get to this. i don't know if you've checked our goatee list but there's probably four or five things on our goatee list that i don't think any of us are played but the buzz is very high on them oh, like I mini shoot adventures etc oh shit mini shoot adventures is on sale right now i need to buy that Pause. oh my god it's on sale right now um, you guys heard about yeah. mini shoot mini shoot adventures no i actually have Let me not, give you no. the, the elevator pitch is it's a top-down twin stick zelda like so it's a twin stick shooter okay. but like a zelda game and people are going wild for it mini shoot adventures um it's supposed to be very very good i'm looking at it right now it looks 20 percent off looks pretty cool people are going wild for it. it it's supposed to be a really cool little indie game cool i um uh not to further aside that but um Vinny on the podcast on their next lander podcast was talking about cataclysmo which also looks really cool. It's like a almost like a they are billions, but you're like resource gathering and building up the walls and it's like tower defense mm -hmm. um, of this like uh, you're like going level by level. And uh, I think that sounds really cool. Fuck, this does look good. Fuck. I know, right? right? That's and that comes access, out. Though. It comes out in a couple of days, I think. Uh, Fuck. So. Uh, July twenty second. Yeah. Of this game, yeah. It's, it looks look, pretty this good. This is not new this year. This is not new this year, but I feel like it is in force this year. AAA games are especially light this year. And so the indies are really coming out. Like yeah, indies like... have been coming up. They've been coming out for several years and hitting really hard. But this is the year where they have the spotlight because in because the AAA is. Yeah, AAA there. titles didn't come out that much this year, which is wild. Yeah, there haven't it's been good. that many. Fuck them. Honestly, give me more Fuck indies. Em. Fuck them. Uh, Ian, uh, what games you've been playing? Yeah, honestly, I thought about it, and like I said, I took my little R35S, which is like a Miu Mini knockoff, basically a little Game Boy retro console, plays up through PS2, although PS2 era gets a little gets a little shaky. Um, or I'm sorry, it plays through PS1, so PS1 and 64. It gets a little shaky around there, depending on the game. Mm. Um, I don't really have anything to call out on there. It's just I have like 15,000 games loaded on there, so I've been thinking about playing baseball games and so i was literally just like search baseball and here's 40 fucking baseball games across like five gens so i was playing like rbi baseball for the famicom and i think i played ken griffey's baseball for the n64 like just hopping in playing in an inner two and being like oh this one's cool and then going to a new one it's just such a cool device to have so many games at your fingertip fingertips where you don't feel like you have to commit to one you can literally just search and be like i want i want a puzzle game and it was like well here's bubble bobble you know Here's a uh, bust a move, etc. Um, so it continues to be a fantastic travel device. The game that I think I've spent the most time on this week is Arma Reforger. Will, myself and uh, Will's brother, Zach, have been playing this and um, we've been having some fun, right? Is that fair to say? Is that fair to yeah. say? Yeah, I've been I <clears throat> I've been shooting so many people and it feels good. And I flew a helicopter ah. and I landed it semi safely. Uh, you did, and Am it I? went. I, I didn't tell them until we were in the air, but the helicopter training was the only one I I failed in the basic training of the video game. You <laughs> you landed. I f I feel like it's my fault because I didn't tell you in time that it was rocky ground and that there was a tree there, and we basically yeah. clipped a tree 
like the last 10 feet and then just kind of dropped I, and the rotors I think were gone, I gotten but we to were the, okay. I think I could have gotten to the landing spot. I just didn't want to like, I went into auto hover and I did not want to fuck it up where we were like 25 yeah, feet off the ground. So I was like, I'm just going to bring it down. It's not going to instantly explode if I break something. So we can at least finish yeah, the exactly. mission. Uh, but it's good. Yeah. It's so, very good. I, yeah. And I, I feel like you are the testament to, I feel like in Arma 3, Arma 3 you enjoyed, but no offense, it felt like you never got good at the game because you were always you were always upset at the end of the round. You were like, I only shot three guys. Like, where are these guys? Like, it felt like you never clicked with Arma 3. Is that fair? Yeah, it always I, I felt like I, I could never see where I was hitting. Like, I don't know. It just yeah. felt felt wonky. It yeah, yeah, it's definitely wonky. But Armor Reforger is the first game in the series where it feels like their main focus was, hey, what if this game didn't feel like shit? What if it didn't yeah. feel like bowls of jello at a thousand yards, you know? <laughs> and and so it looks a lot better. It feels a lot better. It feels more like a modern shooter, but it hasn't sacrificed any of like the hardcore realism or, or military tactics or or sim element of it and so i think will is a testament to it feels so much better and so he's clicking with the game more and he's getting more kills and he's getting more kills than us like he's just really clicked into it and it's not because the game is easier it's just easier to pick up and actually feel and play um so we've been having fun i do want to give a shout out to the game master mode so game master what was previously called zeus and arma 3 is literally it's it's like what it sounds like. It's a multiplayer mode where one person is the dungeon master, the game master. So they have a God's eye view. They can select units, place units in. They can uh, give objectives to the mission players. So you start out on a blank map and they can be like, hey, uh, your objective is to go take this town. And, and then they put like three enemy units in the town. And, and, you know, one of them is patrolling. One of them is defending a bunker that's been placed down. Another one has a machine gun nest that you've placed down. And then they can also take control of any of those players to, you know, add some realism by like pretending to be like an enemy player that's flanking you or whatever. And um, it was really cool because I, I watched a tutorial. I had some really good stuff. So I basically just set up a mission replicating kind of what the tutorial had. And we played it and it worked out really well because the other thing is Game Master is I think Game Master works best when the Game Master is not playing the game. They're in Game Master mode the whole time so that mm -hmm. they can dynamically react, you know, like, oh, uh, the players took out that enemy force too easily. So let me like spawn another squad and have them stumble upon their position. Right. To kind of give it like a dynamic feel and control the tension and pacing of the mission. Um we we've only got three people, so we weren't able to do that. So basically what I did was I created the whole mission from the start and then I spawned myself in to play with them, with Will and Zach. And um, I just kind of have to. Part of it is I try not to remember exactly where the enemy positions are. And the other part of it is half the enemy was patrolling. So I don't know where they are. I know where they start, but I don't know if 10 minutes they're going to be here or if they're going to be at that intersection. You can't have rando random squad mates or something like that like like ai squad mates i think or you can, ai or but just even just like no other players just can't join in like randomly do your no, game they can. It, okay yeah yeah we could have ai squad mates but honestly the ai in arma games is pretty dumb so you don't want okay. them on your team and then um we could have opened it up to randos but we didn't we didn't want to do that i think maybe one day we could but the point is like we were using game master mode to like quickly build a mission and then and then hop in and play it ourselves and so I did that and then Zach did it the next night and it worked really well. I think, Will, you were talking about maybe watching the tutorial and building a mission. Is that right? Yeah, I, I built like 25 percent of a mission uh, and I yeah. and then I got busy. But I need to go back to it because I, I had a good idea uh, for a mission. My, my one hesitation with the game master mode is, is I want more control. Like and I assume there will be mm -hmm. one day, but I would like want to place buildings and like like machine gun yeah. nests and stuff like that and it's not quite you're you're basically only placing things that a player can interact with so like or or other soldiers so like vehicles and and command stations stuff like that it's not quite yeah the like let me and you place can, buildings yeah and you can place like predefined things like here is a concrete bunker here is a sandbag with a machine gun on top of it type of stuff but to your point you're not building complex stuff and you're not building logic like I would have loved in our mission, we were basically trying to sneak into an airfield and steal a helicopter and then fly it to the other side of the map. And I would have loved if I could have set up alarms or triggers. So it's like, hey, if we get in a firefight, 
spawn a squad and have it move towards our last known position. So that way, like there was actually tension when we got into firefights instead of just, oh, we just got to wipe these guys out and then keep moving. Um, I think they may add that in the future. They do have a fully featured mission editor. Like that's one of the great things about Armor Reforger is all the tools the devs are using are there day one for the mod community to use. So we could build more intense ones, but then we lose the simplicity of Game Master. But long story short, Armor Reforger, more than a year in, continues to be awesome. We're diving more into the tools than we did with Arma 3. And I I honestly, I think our next step is either we pick up, we keep doing Game Master, but we pick a mod pack like Vietnam or World War II and change the setting, change the weapons. Or I think it's time for us to hop onto one of the the online PVE servers with like 100 people doing Game Master or whatever and just be a squad there and they have a dedicated game master throwing things at could, us that could, be could fun. you have like a game master could you have like groups of like you guys split up and then like you verse each other so like they set up like a kind of like a there's there's obviously some random enemies there but you guys end up versing each other too like at the end like Actually, oh shoot like we killed yeah. the main bad guy oh there's the like whoever gets the highest score or maybe like they fight each yeah. other or something like that Actually, you could, yeah, because in Game Master mode, you define which factions are playable. So you could totally define all three factions playable and place units of those factions down. So you could have a PvP VE with a Game yeah. Master. That's totally possible. You do, possible. like, two squads are trying to get to, like, uh, like steal a nuke from, like, the airfield or something that, like, the third faction controls. So it's like it's yeah. like America versus Russia. They're trying to get control of the nuke or something like that yeah um, and like that, the defensive guys can can request stuff from the game master and be like i want a bunker here yeah you know like they get like a 10 minute setup period yeah it's yeah. it's a lot of flexibility for what is still a relatively bare bones early access game yeah the thing like uh, i would love to do is like the same way we're doing the pokemon tournament i would love to do a big arma game with like sub pixel and save day then whoever like of our friends likes arma and stuff like that the well, problem you is about halo too. you talked not... about halo too the other day oh yeah i would love to do a like a halo 3 i'm game. telling you the sub pixel so boys fun. would wash us uh wash I, us it's probably I don't know. very good at halo. Uh, bro i, I was fucking very know. Good i'm just i'm just telling you i bro it's 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 a wash these but, guys uh, we're, we're let's players we're fucking let's yeah. players these guys <laughs> we're point and click adventures they're done objection they're cool. objection <laughs> uh, i would uh the only problem is that like armor i mean armor forger is at least a better sell at 40 right that's what its base price is 40 39.99 i think it's 40 and i think it was on i think for steam sales it goes down to what 30 35 yeah, something, something like, that. like that it's at least a better sell but it's not like with the pokemon tournament it's a free program we can use um yeah like i that's the problem is like i feel like of the larger group of all of us i think probably ian and i are the only ones into arma um so we'd have oh, to. Oh yeah, because it, it is a it is a niche game. It's not like I'm going to buy this game anyways. It's like a yeah. Oh, to play people the campaign to buy it or just something. for this. You know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but it's still fun. I, I, you know, I wish Arma had like a, uh, like the like a free version of it where it's like I you can only join a person's game and play with the tools they have. Yeah. Like you can't do any of the. You can't join any other multiplayer game. You can't. Uh, do and game you can only master, play you if your friend's playing exactly like you, you at the same only time join game yeah like like that's um smart. Honestly, like mario kart on the smart. ds like you didn't not everyone oh, had yeah, to own it yeah yeah um i like yeah, that, that you were smart. shy guy if you were just a random dude that actually that actually is very very smart it's super buttoned down but it's like hey you can't convince your friends to play it's okay it's free for them they can join your game for the, free the xbox live does a great job at having guests be able to like sign in to like guest accounts yeah. for yeah. multiplayer games all kinds of stuff like that um, give it some credit for i things. wonder we should maybe, maybe do it for it, halo for example yeah exactly day. maybe if we had a basic plan for it whenever they do a free weekend we could uh get some people together to play oh yeah i mean i think it's literally just game master right because that's yeah worst case is you start a game master server and the first 20 minutes you say hey 20 minutes is for you guys to pick your arsenal and the game master's going to set up a mission because it it should take 20 minutes or less for them to set up a bare bones mission because the other thing is it's it's they can change the mission as it's going right so they really only need to set up enough for the first objective in a way and then they can dynamically add in and build the rest of the mission as you're going. So it's it's very fluid. You know, you could just start it fresh. You don't have to have anything pre-prepared if you don't want. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's fun. It's a good game. Uh, I love it. Uh, yeah, 
that's the games we've been playing this week, folks, which means it's time to get into the news. Ian has taken his news sip, which means Hi. it's time. There's white smoke. We have chosen Hi. the gaming news. Ian, take it away. We have some gaming news here Okay. to kick it off. Uh, three games in particular. Number one, the Jackbox Mega Picker on Steam has finally been revealed. This is going to be a free application that, like we've talked about, is basically just a single launcher for all of the Jackbox party packs and games that you own, instead of having to constantly switch between party packs. Second announcement, Splitgate 2, the Portal FPS game that was very popular a couple years ago, has been announced. It's coming out in 2025 to PS5, PS4, and PC, and Xbox, I believe, as well. And finally, a little bit of gaming rumor here. The Halo series developer 343 Industries will only supervise development of future entries in the series, and they will not be responsible for development of... I I didn't even realize they still were. That's how down the rabbit hole I thought. I mean, what did they do? They did five and... They did five and... I don't even know if they did, like, the the collections or something, like, the the, the games right after. So they did four, five, and infinite. I know Reach was the last one Bungie did. Yeah, and MCC, they did as well. But yeah, Reach is the last one Bungie did. You're right. And they, and they fucked up the MCC launch, remember? Because that was real rough at the start. Yeah. But that was, that was, wasn't that 343? Yeah, that's who we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, that was, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, what, yeah. that's what I mean, yeah. Because yeah. there, there was the Master Chief collection, and then there was another thing, too. They were there was the anniversary. Like, anniversary, yeah. But anniversary was pre-Master Chief collection. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll run down their full thing, because this actually kind of makes sense. So they did the 2011 Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary, which was like the Xbox yeah. 360 remake. They did Halo 4. Halo Spartan Assault, which was the mobile game and that eventually came to 360 and, and Xbox One. Halo Master Chief Collection. Halo Spartan yes. Strike, which was another mobile game. Halo 5. Halo Wars Definitive Edition and Halo Wars 2, but those right. were collaborations with Creative Assembly. Uh, Halo Recruit for Microsoft Windows, which I've never, never heard of. Heard of, never heard of that. Uh, Halo Fireteam Raven, which was the arcade Halo game, and yeah. then Halo Infinite. Infinite is what I'm trying to think of. Infinite yeah, was so was great. mechanically okay. <laughs> yeah, mechanically it was actually pretty good. And then and yeah, it had, it had, it had good, good ideas. Too. It was good exploration. Poor yeah, overall but... exploit. Yeah. 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 It was like it was like they had a lot of really good ideas, but they just didn't know how to put it together yeah. into a game. Yes. Yeah. I I I'm excited about this because I feel like three four industry three, three four three industries had a had a good shot here. All they had to do was make like solid seven to eight out of ten Halo games and they were just i don't want to say they were getting weren't, worse but the fact that their latest the one weren't they doomed to fail though no everybody's not going to like it over bungie though they you had some of the more, most classic yeah, games in the series, pretty good. two and three reach but you didn't i will say you didn't have to make it you didn't have to make it better you didn't even necessarily have to make it as good you just had to hit like a solid seven out of ten like a gears five right like think about gears five that was taken over by coalition they delivered oh, I, a solid I think gears, gears game. five is i think gears five is not great that's the thing. That's fine if it's not great, but it's it's good. That's all they got to hit. And I don't even yeah, think 343 I mean, hit that. I, it's you weird because if that's if it's any other franchise but Halo 4 and 5, like if it didn't have Halo in the name, I don't think people would have hated those games as much. Now, would they have been like, you know, they probably would have been mm-hmm. seven or eights if they were just some unknown fucking title. The problem is you're comparing it to greatest games yeah. of their generation. That's 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 what I'm trying yeah. to say. I, I think they did kind of fuck up. But I, like they, they, I would they fucked up. Yeah, I think the next thing is like they should be like, oh, here's a here's a Halo game set in the Halo universe. Like it's not necessarily Master Chief or anything related to that. It right. doesn't even have to be related to the direct Covenant War ring stuff. Like it could be something some side yeah. thing. Um, and I think they got that's all those side the next stories step. And, yeah, yeah, all the side stories in the books they could take from. You know, because there's plenty yeah. of stuff. Even Bungie doing ODST uh, was a fantastic uh, yes, game. Ah, the, uh, yes, the Star Wars dilemma. Stop talking about Anakin the Sky. Do you like your Make own Andor. fucking? There's so much stuff to do. Yeah, yeah. Tell a different story in that universe. I agree. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They but do and it. then I, not to counter what you're saying, but I think the other thing is if they made Halo Infinite two and they just gave it to a competent studio that could take the pieces from Infinite and then put it together into a good cohesive game i would play the shit out of that because i i played a decent amount of infinite i didn't finish it i probably played about half of it because the mechanics were good enough 
that it was getting me beyond the rougher, unfinished edge of it. And if you just had a studio that came in and did the exact same thing, but actually finished it and pulled it together, that would be incredible. That would be a great mainline game. I bet I bet those Horizon Zero Dawn devs could make a pretty good Halo with all that like yeah, tech, 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 I guess. Resistance. They were the Resistance series before Horizon. Yeah. And that was a solid FPS. They could be pretty good at that. Uh, yeah, so uh, th- this is, uh, I'm excited. A, I hope they... That's a joke. That's a joke. Right, because uh, Gorilla is owned by Sony. Oh, yeah, obviously. But I still think they would make a oh, good okay. Halo game. Um, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. But yeah, I wonder Honestly, who they give it to. Give it to the Splitgate devs. Do you remember playing Splitgate felt like fucking Halo, and it was great. Give it to them. Give it to them. Good thing they're making it too. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, they they said something like the original game was like 10 devs and they got surprised by the success of it. And so instead of like continuing with that game in a way, they were just like, let's support it a little bit, but let's immediately pivot, expand, get some deals and start working on the better version of the game. And that the, that's why like Splitgate 2, when I first saw it, I was like, is this an Overwatch 2 situation where you're just like, let's put a 2 on it just for the sake of getting new sales. But it feels like this is them oh, actually... God. Yeah, this feels like them taking a step back and saying, we've we've clearly had success with our first game. Let's take a step back. Let's pivot a little bit and focus on making an even better version of this instead of continuing to try and support this partial version we have right now. And Mm. I'm excited about that. Yeah. Exciting. Uh, Jackbox Mega Picker, you excited for that? Make it's it easier. Good quality of life, yeah. It's just good. Yeah. It's just a good feature to have for a game, a series that has like what, an hour 10 party packs at this point. It's going to be yeah. really nice for people who have multiple yeah. ones to run everything, especially when the games very, very drastically. You could have a pack that's fucking awful for stream and then one pack that's like good for like four to five people. But they, they do, they tend to do that. So, um, some some just hit well and some don't, so it's be nice to switch between them. Yeah, yeah. I think that that naughty one comes out soon too, which we'll have to try for extra life. I'm, I'm a little hesitant. Like, uh, you guys ever played the board game Code Names? Yes, I have. Yeah. Um, a lot. There is. Yeah, there's a. I think it's called Code Names Undercover, which is their like 18 plus adult version of it. Okay. So like, the cards say things like lick, sweat, whip. You know like to encourage you to be a bit yeah. more risque with it. And my my sister got it for me as like a Christmas present or whatever. And I pulled it out and I was immediately like, I don't I don't want to play this mostly because I play it with my family. But even if I was playing it with my friends, I don't want to I don't want to play a see, sexy game. I, yeah. I don't like, like that because you can still make the normal one. You, If you want to make the normal one, you could do it that way. But my big thing is I like the spinoffs like that have very specific. OK, this yeah, is the like Marvel Disney. one. Like, yeah, the, Dis- yeah. There's the Disney one. I think there's a Marvel one or like a super con- like hero one. There's more yeah. tailored to like specific geek stuff if you want to do that. Yeah, but I don't so think that, the Jackbox I... Naughty is going to be like that of, of any yeah, company yeah, that is different. <sighs> um, well, let me let me put it this way. It just feels like Jackbox normal. You could get naughty if you wanted to, but it was not forced. I feel like in Jackbox Naughty, it's it's going to feel a bit too forced. I think I think that's just the problem with naughty versions of things is it feels you like uh, what's the game with the uh, fucking you try to get phrases together. It's like the not the naughty board game where you pull like, oh, tie, oh, you like oh, uh, 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 cards against humanity time. cards against humanity. I, I always dislike oh, yeah. that game because it's just like, you know, you should encourage creativity, not because it's the humor is forced to be vulgar. Like Ian saying, you are just creative yeah. enough to come up with it when the time is right. Yeah, so yeah, that's, I'm that's more took it like, hey, we can finally do prompts that are a little more like just like definitely PG there are no 13. children around. Um, and I think yeah. the thing with Jackbox so far has always been like there might be a kid around. Uh, so let's like dial it back a little bit. And I, and I don't think this is going to be like raunchy in that sort of bad way. I just think it, I think it's going to be like, hey, we, we just like amped it up a little bit. Um, yeah, I guess I guess in my head, it's like. It's like Jackbox is I feel like Jackbox is PG-13. I don't think R is enough for them to consider it a new version. So I think they're going to go. NC-17, and I think that's too forced. That's my concern. Yeah, I think it depends on what is in the pack anyways. 
of what they're yeah. doing. So, because I, I don't think it's specifically said what games are in there. Um, it would no. be nice if they did like their like a new game for it, like specifically because it has that. Uh, anyways, hit me with the the business. Yes. Um, there is a Pokemon X Crocs collaboration set to release oh, this God. year. I'm not a Crocs man. All I have is my. I recently bought a ten dollar pair of Crocs from uh croc knockoffs from walmart because i was like let me try it i need new flip-flops and fuck me i may need to buy some f- fucking pokemon crocs you seen these moccasins. You guys moccasins will change your life they're moccasin, really boy. ugly that's fine no no that's, sorry that's crocs kinda... crocs are really <laughs> ugly that's kind ah. of the thing about crocs is that you're confident that it kind of gives you a little confidence to be like yeah so what they're ugly they got but a nice what? fire red charizard one I see the problem here is. Have you, have you seen those button up ones? Have you seen the polos, Ian? I can picture you wearing a, the Pokemon. There's like those polo shirts if you literally type them in. Um, I haven't seen those. I've seen the Pokemon Hawaiian shirts, which were really good. Uh, My problem like with these is like, one. I don't. I wear shoes. And I wear shoes when I go out. Yeah, but you live in Jersey. So if you step outside without shoes, you're going to get like tetanus, syphilis. No, not even that. Poison. It's just like. When I leave, I wear shoe. Like when? When would I ever? I don't even wear sandals or flip flops. So, so part of this is Florida mentality, where it's like if I'm running a quick errand, I will, I will just, I want slip on shoes, with no socks. Not necessarily flip flops, like thong flops. I think those are too informal. But I have a lot of slip on no sock shoes that are perfect for Florida. It's See, like it's I, hot. Let me just step outside, do it, and come back. You know. I don't not wear socks. Like I'm a socks always on unless I'm sleeping Even in the house. You know, I have noticed in the house you wear socks, which is fucked. No, that's not wearing socks in the house is disgusting. Wait, 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 wait. What are we not doing? Wearing socks? No, fucking I wear socks everywhere, man. That's yeah. just how it's in, ho- in the house, in the house. Do you wear yeah. socks yeah. in the house? Of yeah, course, your feet are going to get I'm dirty. I'm wearing a fucking moccasin, dude. Like, what do you want from me? What's wrong I'm with you? Gonna bare, I'm not getting my sweaty ass feet in my moccasins. <laughs> Wait, first of all, your feet shouldn't be sweaty. And second of all, uh, wearing yeah, socks should. around it's the house not. feels like feels like you're wearing condoms. It's just like no, it it's just not, like man, it's comfortable. what is this on my feet? What is going no. on around Ugh. here? Oh, no, like, man. New toes, brah. New toes. Ugh. The soul fly. You are no literally way. the most disgusting <laughs> yeah. man I've ever heard. Ugh. Uh, Ugh. No, I, I at least I keep my feet clean. I, I remember one person that I was friends with in college who only wore flip flops all the time. And I don't know how this ended up like this but the bottoms of their feet were always black just black and that's fucked that's fucked i I don't wear socks socks? but my feet are clean no they never wore socks they always wear foot flops and i don't know if they just never washed their feet or whatever they were just always black the bottoms of their feet and it was fucked up my feet are at least clean you know but anyways um these crocs are gross i i don't like them i i I need more crazy Pokemon merch because if it's a decent price, fuck yeah, I'll buy it. These Crocs are not going to be. These are going to be like 60 bucks, though, for sure. Listen, if Crocs uh, came out with their new Galactic Empire shoes, like I'd be all over them. <laughs> They're not going to. Hey, are you guys excited for the PlayStation 5 Pro? Mm, yeah. Um, I, I haven't bought a console since the Switch, so I'm pretty much a PC gamer, which is weird because I you know, still play like everything with a controller anyway so i'm just basically playing my console games on my pc so you know i don't i don't blame you because this generation has been weak and i don't understand the need for a pro console but according to tom henderson at insider gaming the ps5 pro is still planned for the second half of 2024 so uh what they what he's learned is that quote developers can submit their applications supporting the ps5 pro to certification and operations at playstation on july 30th so Check that's when they out. can start uh, submitting for certification for the PS5 Pro and that any PS5 games that will be released after September 15th will be required to support the PlayStation 5 Pro. So we don't have the exact release date, but uh, the uh, rumors and leaks are still pointing towards the latter half of November 2024. I I don't really get the need for this, right? It's, uh, it's it almost screams like a desperate attempt to make more money 
before the PlayStation 6. Yeah. I it's, mean, um, yeah, it's dumb. It's not great. It's, it's still going to sell. I, this at least makes more sense to me than PSVR 2 and the PlayStation Portal because people will buy this. And if you're a PlayStation diehard fan, you will you will buy the Pro. It's like fucking AirBuds, AirPods Pro or whatever. You offer the better option and your diehards will buy it anyways. Um, I just don't understand this because this generation, I don't know if you guys feel this way, but this generation feels like it has clung to the previous generation longer than any other video game generation. And what I mean by that is um, there are games coming out today. What is this? Four fucking three and a half years into the generation that are still being released on well, the previous generation. I think we're at a weird. I think we're at a weird spot in gaming where. A weird Generations don't period. matter. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think it's just weird right now. I think we're we're getting we're going to get to a point where games are realistically they're already starting to do that 70 80 is going to be the norm and people are just going to have to get fucking like you know they're just going to have to get used to it because yeah that's unfortunately just where it's going to because think about one of the few things that hasn't raised in price like you know everything has raised in price gas food basically everything commodities movie tickets everything you know what hasn't video games 40 to 60 bucks consistent since probably 2000 1995 whatever you want to do uh, with Nintendo games and such. And, you know, these companies are not going to go for $60 games, have the manpower yeah. to make these games because they keep the demand for how good the game is keeps going up. Price stays the same. So, like, even if you yeah. make the best game of all time, people are still, like, losing. The, the companies are firing. or they're, they're doing it out of degree, but at the same time, they can't afford to have this many people on because they're making the best game. Yeah. Takes a lot more, but they're still not selling it for more. It's kind of yeah. crazy. So the games are more expensive to make. Yes. The profit per copy is a lot less. Yes. And therefore, why would they exclude themselves to Correct. a single generation when they can cross cross try it? to go cross generations yeah. as long as they fucking can? Because there's no point to try to push the hardware now. Yeah. You might as well try to scrape up anything you can on this and, one. And honestly, I don't I don't hate it that much. It, it it does feel a little bad being like, oh, I bought these two brand new consoles and I'm not really getting exclusives for these consoles. But at the same time, I'm not necessarily upset with console performance of the latest releases, right? Like Dragon's Dogma 2 and and other games that I cannot think of at this point in time. Um, but it does point to if the games are cross gen and they're not stressing the current hardware why do you need a pro hardware? Like, what are they what are they even going to say with the pro versus the PS5 version? Is it just guaranteed 4K ray tracing? That's not yeah. enough of a sell, you know, I feel like I feel like this generation of any hasn't gotten to the point where you're like, oh, they they figured out the systems like the games coming out work on like are they're hitting it. They're doing great. Yeah. And I feel like they're still not quite there like i feel like for the switch tears of the kingdom felt like man they've got that switch on lock like they know what it oh. can do they're oh, pushing no, it buddy. to its it's I, absolute limits. i feel like i feel like that was metroid dread because remember metroid dread looked good and ran at 60 and 1080p and people were like wow i think tears of the kingdom was the okay this hardware is really it's a miracle they made it work on hardware this right. bad Th that's what i'm saying no like what well, no but i think I, th I think what you're trying to say is like an uncharted four where it's like how do they make it look and run this good whereas tears of the kingdom is like how do they make this run at all yeah you know what i yeah, mean about the same um i, I yeah I, I think tears of the kingdom is yeah um so i think that moment hasn't come around for the 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 like i don't feel like there's a game where i'm like oh, i can't wait to see that on the pro it's not like Red Dead with the Xbox uh, One X and stuff like that. Yeah, the where one, you're just yeah, like, exactly. oh, that's going to be in 4K, blah, blah, blah. Like, there's none of that. So it's like, okay, the Pro will be out. What am I going to play on it? I, I mean, don't know. most of mine are just remakes that I would want. That's why. Yeah. Yeah, but this I can play a remake thing. anyways. I mean, other than... I'm just I'm just trying to think of the tech specs. Like literally, what are they going to say that you get with the five pro that you don't get you, with the five? You, you, you can't like, I don't know. That's it just you're, ray you're tracing. Completely I, right. Yeah. I think it's literally just ray tracing. There's and, no, then, and then there, there yeah. may be games where they say it's 30 on the PS5 and it's 60 on the PS5 pro. 
I think I think companies the next step was supposed to be in between they've been working on this for a while was going to be the new tech was going to be virtual like gaming or whatnot. And no offense to people who have bought those and there's some on my team for save data that have like tell me how good those are or play games on those. I'm like, bro, it's not as big as it it probably would have or could have or should have been. People are not going to spend 240 bucks for that piece of thing to play one game that might be good. Uh -huh. They want to play all of the games. It's just not as big as I think that was going to be the next big thing. Like you said, I don't know what they're going to push for in the next one. Like, what? how do you improve I, that I much I feel like more? we're I feel like we're in the 82 crash of virtual uh, yeah. reality. Or it's obviously not that bad, but like I feel like the next thing that like kicks it off is gonna rebolster. Like it needs its like killer app. I, I agree. Or yeah, something needs... or some technology because like uh, we've talked about it playing with Ian and VTOL VR and the MetaQuest Three. Like it is at a point that it is pretty fantastic. Like even with yeah, the, hard, the, no. the hardware's there, the hardware's yeah, there, the hardware's there, it's and just, all the stuff there. It's just, it's just the games more... need yeah. to get there. The, the cost yeah. could come down a little bit to get cost the average person into games. it. Like, there just needs to be something... Like, if COVID happened during the height of, like, the MetaQuest 3 and everything, I feel like we'd be in a different place uh, with virtual reality, but it was... It's not quite yeah. it's just where it's not there be. yet. Where you well, that's expect. just that's uh, I didn't put this on the news, but I mean, since you guys brought it up, there are heavy rumors <laughs> that next year they're going to be releasing a MetaQuest 3S targeting like a 250 to 300 dollar price point with roughly the same hardware. I think that's that's the one that. problem with the Quest 3 right now is that it it is the hardware and 500 dollars is still a good deal. It's just not a mainstream price point. But if they get that down to 300 like they did with the Quest 2, that's a fucking mainstream. But but again exactly like you said will it's about the content like the number of like quality replayable like mechanically deep vr games it's pr it's probably five or less like i would struggle to name three or more they're they're just a lot of fucking tech demos that's all it is they're very paper thin the problem is the content not the hardware right now yeah it needs it's like halo combat evolved or 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 Uncharted, or or and yeah, or like VTOL VR, yeah, yeah, uh, that game's already perfect. That's why, honestly, that's why I get so fucking hard for VTOL VR because it is a full fucking game. I have I'm at like ninety hours in that game, and I still want to play it all the time. Like that is a game game that you can play and enjoy and have depth in, and that you can't find that in in a majority of other VR games. Like like I played a, there was some fucking city builder game that was like free for a weekend that I played. I played it for thirty minutes, and it was like city skylines, but yeah. stripped down to the bare minimum of the mechanics, where you just like draw roads and then you zone it, and then it gets built, and that's fucking it. And I'm like. That's not enough. That's not a fucking video game. Like, there's two fucking mechanics in this. That's not enough. And that's the problem with VR content. They're not making fucking games. God, I want Sims 5 to be a VR game. Where I just yeah, have the house in front of me on my desk, picking the Sims up, drowning them, uh, yeah. watching them woohoo. Uh, yeah, yeah. That would work. Love it. Love um... It. Guys, let's let's end with some news here. Halo, the TV show, has been canceled after two seasons at Paramount Plus. Jason, at least let's start with you. Chief's ass. That's good. Have you? Ha, did you watch the Halo series? No, I did not. My my buddy, who is an avid Halo guy, said as soon as Halo, uh, Master Chief took off his helmet, he lost any and all interest. So, which is oh, okay, okay. Because yeah. we we all watched the first season and did a talk on it. And I was, I was, I would say appreciative of what they were trying to do, even though I don't think they pulled it off. And so I was more positive than the rest. And Will, you just flat out hated it, right? I feel like you started skipping episodes. I skipped the one episode that I could tell was about two characters who didn't matter at all. Uh, oh, because it was a DEI episode. Yeah. <laughs> You know, the funny thing is, that was the DEI episode. It was, that for you sure. It, you, you described it perfectly, but it also was about two characters who had, who had, that are had just no bad. reason. They're just bad to, characters. They're yeah, lame. Because they're no. <laughs> Um Yeah, I, and then uh, we were all going to watch season two, and then everyone did watch season two except for me. And I was like, shit, I'm going to have to watch it now. And then we just never scheduled the talk. And I was like, thank I, God. <laughs> yeah, I think part of it was was... 
I lost enthusiasm for it. And Jake kept saying that it was better than season one. And I thought the complete opposite. And I was like, I don't feel like having this conversation. So we just never scheduled the, the content around it. But yeah, Halo, Halo for me was one of those series where I still really appreciate that they did not make the Halo story, right? Because that's that's easy as fuck to do. And even if you did it really well, I would still no. feel like I would still feel like, OK, you just made you just made Halo, the video game, the movie, and that's cool. But there's like we just talked about, there's other stuff in that universe. I, I wouldn't and, want them so to they make try. Bioshock. I wouldn't want them to make Bioshock the plot line. There's other parts of the Bioshock timeline you could do. Don't do the story of Bioshock, the game. Just make yeah. a Bioshock. Like, but I think epic, my problem like, was around that area. They they like they didn't not do the Halo story. They just did a weird, different version of the same Halo story. And I would have yeah, rather and, them and, just not do the Halo story and do something else. Yeah, yeah, like completely, like not have Master Chief. And I don't think it had to fair. be like canon with the games, but I think similar enough universes, and then be about Spartans or something. Like that was my major gripe with it is like they were so like, well, we can't change it too much because the people who like Halo are gonna want to see Master Chief, but we also have to change it a little bit because we can't. I don't know. It's just. Was yeah, frustrating. like like the the changes they did make, they didn't justify or, or or make sense. Um, I think the other thing is just there's one fucking word you could use to describe the Halo series, which is just incompetent. Like that series, the cinematography, the editing, the direction, the dialogue, the storyline, the pacing, everything was just not well done, right? And so so a lot of my quote unquote defense of that series is like picking diamonds out of the rough and being like, well, they had a good idea here. And that's that action scene was kind of cool. And that's a that's a cool character there. But the majority of it was just not well done across the board. And and I gave them credit in season one where I was like, they're trying something here. They've got to get better at it. Right. And then season two came along and I was like, no, it's pretty much the same fucking quality. And it was just like, OK, they don't realize the problems they have. And I'm a little upset they're not going to have a season three because it was such a weirdly bad show. <laughs> like it wasn't like I was it wasn't like I was watching Big Bang Theory where it's like, oh, it's just generic shitty fucking sitcom. Right. You know, it's not like I'm watching a, or a show that is so bland and boring that I'm struggling to pay attention to it. It was bad in an interesting way. Not to say that the show was good in any way, but I was at least like, this is so weird. The decisions like they're accident. making. Yeah, and it, and it had and it had enough halo in it. And you know what? There were there were still even in season two, there were little bits of it where you're just like, oh, fuck, this is cool. Like they've picked up on something cool here, you know? And so I was kind of looking forward to season three just for the experience of maybe some of those cool bits. But this cancellation feels like one of the most earned cancellations I've ever seen. It, they just fucked it up so bad across the yeah. board. It sucks. We'll never see his ass again, but we'll see the asses we made it. along the way. It's my uh, wallpaper. Jason, I just I just want to tell you, you have zero obligation to watch the Halo series. There oh, is. OK, thank God. I, I know. I just want I just want because I I can picture at some point in the future, at least once, there will be a thought that crosses your head. And the thought is, should I watch that Halo show? And the answer is no. I have, I have like 80 shows no. I need to always catch up on. So like. Yeah, like put you don't need to do the Halo show. Yeah, it's not worth it. Yeah, you should watch the Halo show. Okay, I'm here to it's tell you it's it. worth it. Right. There's Your probably honor. what five or six good action sequences, and just watch those. I just remember this. Oh, uh, actually, I don't want to get into it. I don't want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> I, the only thing I want to leave you with is I am happy there are more real warthogs in the world, uh, because they yes. had to build them for the show, and I'm just happy about that. Because there should be more warthogs. The Cybertruck should have been a warthog. It would have been fucking yeah. awesome. Um, I will. Okay, look. In memoriam for the show, I need to call out one of their coolest ideas, which was in season two. And the premise was that they started training new Spartans. The Spartans weren't medically enhanced, but they were just like super trained up like steroids, uh, special forces strollers. And then they were given like like Mjolnir armor, but like smaller versions because they weren't bulked up. And basically the premise was they were going to attack a covenant fleet, but the way they were going to do it was fly these 
I think they called them like Spartan twos or whatever, fly a bunch of these Spartan twos into tiny drop ships and they would jump out of the back of the drop ships in space and just like, like specifically target and just float at high speed towards the covenant ship, land on the hull, then group up breach and make their way through the ship to take over the central bridge and then spike it with a virus that would hit the rest of the ships. And like they had a couple scenes where they were like practicing in that and then doing it. And I was like, that's fucking cool, right? Like that is that's cool. fucking cool. That's I'll the Halo game they should make is uh, you're a strike yeah. team that breaches covenant uh, ships. Yeah, you're a Spartan too. Yeah, you're yeah. a Spartan too. You and don't, you're not a super soldier, but you have a, co- a cool suit. That's it. It's just Rainbow Six Siege in space. Procedurally generate the uh, rooms inside the Covenant ship. Uh, That's exactly what it was, because they were like trying to breach through, and they're like cover. It, it was fucking cool. <laughs> they're never yeah, gonna they make it. Some though, good ideas. Marketing says yeah. Master Chief has to be in it uh, if we want those B two B sales. So uh, yeah, the EBITDA they should down. just come up. They could totally make it. It's just it wouldn't be it wouldn't be Halo Three ODST. They would just call it like Halo whatever the odst unit is that does yeah. like you know <laughs> ship to ship combat halo Recon. halo marines i don't know anyways um that's it for for gaming news nice i'm excited uh the news is great uh is this your little uh content call out here this is uh folks i'm so happy that we didn't have to announce layoffs this week but we do have a little bit of layoff related news this is a, a friend of mine from ZeniMax Online, they actually were working at Gorilla, and they were impacted by the recent layoffs. And uh, they've decided to launch a Kickstarter for something called Solo Q. That's S O L O Q, and it's an RPG planner. Uh, I they haven't really uh, released the Kickstarter yet. But my understanding is that it's like a physical paper planning journal where you get to like create a character, like you crush daily goals. It's kind of like an RPG combined with your everyday planner to kind of gamify your life. It looks really cool. This is from somebody who was who is pursuing their dream after being unfairly impacted by the gaming layoffs. So you should totally go out and uh, check out Solo Q. That's S-O-L-O-Q, one word. It's an RPG planner on Kickstarter. They're going to be launching soon. So go sign up for the notification. Heck yeah, this looks neat. I like... I like... Um that sort of take on a thing where they're like, Hey, there's this healthy thing called planning your like planners, but a lot of people aren't super into planners. So we want to hit the, the people like of the RPG persuasion. Um, and you can do it. So that sounds great. Yeah. Uh, hashtag, hashtag ad. So we'll have to mark ad on, on all these, po- on these podcasts now promoted, uh, product. Um, great. I'm excited. That's it folks. That's the show. I'm gonna hit the That's button. I'm gonna hit the button. We're gonna get the fuck out of here. Um, that button, folks. Uh, this has been Local Chat. I've been your host, Will Crosby. Joining me this week was the lovely and wonderful Ian Gibson and the talented and beautiful Jason from Save Data. So, ooh, uh, you, can, so. you can find his stuff at the Green Eight Ball. Uh, you can also find him Tuesdays here, uh, playing Fire Emblem with me. Uh, just in awe of of. Uh, just right. being the same Zoom oh, Zoom call. Man. I OBS to put on call was just like that one. It was yeah, like... he yeah he's he can't even stand up during it. He's so turned on. Um, we will be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern, with the lovely uh, Chris. Jesus, I'm all over the place. Uh, yes, Chris Jesus, otherwise known as Ian Gibson, is going to be playing some Fallout New Vegas. Oh yeah. Um, and then I think I'm on the save data thing on Sunday, 2.30. They're playing Mario Party 3 Crowd Control. So I'll be for, we'll there see. for that. Check it you out. Might be. We'll see you all then. Bye. Huh?